Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omar and today I will review the debut album by the psychedelic pop rock band Tame Impella. I think that's how you say their name, Tame Impella, so there you go. If I say it wrong then correct me. Kind of a unique name for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not very familiar, familiar with these guys. Um, I've heard some of their songs before. Some of their like popular hits on YouTube or something, like some of their music videos which are pretty weird. Uh, I was not very impressed whenever I first heard them. I, you know, I, I had a difficult time getting into them, but I have to say, I listened to this album, I listened to every song, and I actually really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, I definitely, you know, should have given them another shot because I definitely like this, you know, and I gave them another shot. And I think that this is uh, probably becoming one of my favorite bands because I really enjoyed this album. So. Um, that should uh, say something already, you know, me saying that, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, we have 11 songs, it's 50 minutes long. I do have to say that this album felt very long, you know, it was not one of those albums like you listen to the first track and you listen to the last one and it was just over in, in a winds. But it definitely did um, last for, uh, it did linger on for a bit. Not a bad thing, but you know, that I just had a feeling with that, so do it over sure. Um, it is not meant to be, it's the first track, it was kind of a pleasant opening track, it doesn't really bombard you with too much, it just kind of starts out very nicely and it just kind of does the job really. Nice opening track, but the album only gets better from there. Desire Beat, Desire Go, uh, which is a very revealing kind of exposing track. Uh, pretty enjoyable, I like uh, the song a bit more because it just goes out of its way a bit more to experiment and just show off what Tame, Tame Impala is capable of. So um, I definitely like this song, uh, it's kind of equal to the first song, if not better or worse, you know, I cannot really decide, so a good opening tracks. Then we have Alter Ego, which is kind of a trippy, kind of boggling track. Uh, the band definitely goes a bit more spacier on this track, I would say, definitely a bit more uh, just, you know, altering in a way um, their craft, what, what they used to do on the first two tracks. Definitely an enjoyable track because it does alternate with the other songs and it just, you know, it crescendos into an arguably even better song. So this album definitely has a lot of potential for me right now. I definitely really like it, so there you go. And then we have Lucidity, which is I believe the first clickable song of the album. Um, I really enjoyed this one because um, this song kind of reminds me of Silent Lucidity from Queen Trike, which was released. I believe two decades before this album, in 1990, uh, Love the Empire record from the band. And this was released in, uh, yeah, 2010, exactly two decades ago. So damn, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even see the, the, the fucking year it was released in, but 2010. Uh, so yeah, exactly two decades ago, that's uh, kind of a coincidence right there. Uh, I really love this track, it does remind me of that Queen Track song. Uh, Lucidity is a very nice track, you know, it's very melancholy, it's very, um, you know, space pop in a way, a lot of great instrumentation, a lot of good production on the song, very good, really liked it, um, yeah, it was just an enjoyable track I thought, and um, yeah, just a lovely track, one of my favorites. Then we have Why Won't You Make Up Your Mind, which was a very kind of cluster song, not necessarily one of my favorites, not per se one of my least favorites, but it was just kind of there, I guess. Uh, it's kind of sandwiched between arguably the two best song songs of the album, so it's definitely uh, kind of a dark horse, or kind of uh, the dark sheet between the popular horse, so do it what you will. Enjoyable track, I liked it, but it's a bit too cluster for my taste. It's not a bad track, but it's, uh, it's overshadowed by the other two tracks where it's sandwiched between, so there you go. Um, and then we have the best song of the album, or it's, I believe, the highest rated song of the album, uh, Solitude is Bliss. Amazing song, it just starts off with this kind of percussion in a way, uh, really catchy, it just kind of crescendos later on into this very beautiful, kind of luc lucidity-like kind of uh, melancholic trip in a way, this mind trip, really love that sound. Um, I love the instrumentation, like I said, the percussion is really good on this, uh, the opening bit especially. Uh, solo, I mean the title is great too, Solitude is Bliss, so um, I'm loving everything about the song though. So this is definitely my favorite Tame Impala song at the moment, but I believe that there are other two albums, 
are higher rated, so um, I'm gonna look out for those albums as well, you know, after this, so do it as well. Really great song, I love it, it's my favorite Tame Impala song at the moment, that's probably gonna change whenever I'm gonna listen to Lonerism, which is like, I believe a modern classic, so um, definitely gonna look out for that, great song, love it, um, yeah, it's pretty much perfect, so there you go. Then we have Jeremy Storm, which is another amazing track. It's an instrumental actually, and this is a very uh, nice flushed out kind of instrumental. Uh, very layered, very complex, but also kind of down to earth and still kind of, you know, uh, you can still stomach, the, stomach this song in a way. I cannot say the word stomach, there you go. You can still stomach this uh, song, but you know, it's definitely kind of a, um, you know, um, I'm gonna say this, you can still stomach this song, but it can be a bit complex in a way, but it's still like uh, enough down to earth to actually get it. Uh, so there's definitely a very complex instrumental, but you know, it's not too hard to get into, I would say. It's definitely kind of on a, on a fringe line, I would say. It's complex, but it's still kind of catchy in a way. So, you know, it's, mix, it's mixed for that. Uh, personally, I really love it because I love fringe songs like that. You know, fringe is in, rock or is it rock or is it metal or fringe as in is it easy to get into or is it hard to get into which is a thing too i guess and i think that jeremy jeremy storm is definitely uh you know a good contender for for that section right there for that team uh love that title to jeremy storm fucking love to say that so uh only for that title arguably it's one of my favorites but uh, it's a really good instrumental really really great in uh instrumentals uh, lovely production, love the, love the production, uh, yeah, just a great track, um, arguably one of my favorites too, so there you go. But it is kind of overshadowed because it's the only unclickable song between all the, all the hits, I would say, all the singles, so there you go. So it's definitely kind of overshadowed, but I would say this is the best Dark Sheep of the channel, and not Why Won't You Make Up Your Mind, which is not a bad song, but it's just, you know, it's not my favorite, so there you go. Uh, now we have expectation, and my expectations for this band were actually really high, and uh, they did actually not disappoint. So, you know, I've been listening to their music videos, and I wasn't really impressed by them. But uh, you know, sitting down and actually listening to to an album of theirs is actually you know really good. So maybe Tame and Pella are one of these bands that uh, their music videos freak the shit out of me, and that's why I don't like. That's why I didn't like them. But maybe if I just sit, sit down for an album, I love them. Maybe they're a band like that, I don't know. Because I love this album. But I was not in love with the song that you know I heard from the music video. So there you go. Which is I believe from the last one. From, from the last album, so there you go. Uh, Expectation is definitely a pretty solid track. I do think that the song is a bit too long. It's six minutes long, so... Uh, this track definitely kind of went on for a bit. It's definitely kind of an overrated single in a way. Um, not bad per se, but it's just kind of, um, you know, it's there, I guess. Didn't really mind it, to be honest, but, um, you know, it's not bad, but I just prefer other singles. It's kind of it, honestly, and it just kind of went on for a while. And then we have The Bold Arrow of Time, which, another amazing title. I mean, um, love or hate Tame and Bella, but their titles are fucking great. Lucidity, Solitude is Bliss, Jeremy Storm, The Bold arrow of time i mean it also sounds fucking awesome though even alter ego in a way sounds pretty good so fucking awesome titles uh this was a very uh adventurous kind of track definitely sounded very space rock in a way because it really sounded like i was going on a, on a trip on a on an adventure on an acid trip in a way but the best possible way so there you go really adventurous song really diverse has a lot of great ex experimentation um, yeah, I just really enjoyed this track. I thought it was really uh, good, bold, you know, no, no pun intended, or maybe, maybe I did. But just a very diverse, really catchy track, and it was also very, uh, you know, uh, thoughtful or intelligent, I would say. Very pretty intelligent songwriting, so definitely was a fan of that. Um, However, you know, I, I love the bold era of time, but I will say that after the 9 track, uh, the album has kind of a, what would you say, kind of, um, you know, a bad 
it kind of goes on a bad drug itself. Why do you say that? A bad trip? I would say it goes on a bad trip in the last 10 minutes. You, you could have, uh, you know, cut it out 10 minutes of this arm and, you know, it would have been like, well, a 9 maybe or like a 10 or a, like a 9 and a half or something really good. But I'm gonna, you know, give it a bit of a lower rating later on because I do think that these last two tracks, not bad. Uh, I actually do really like the style of Runaway Houses City Clouds, which, uh, or Runaway Houses City Clouds. Uh, I would have probably preferred it without the commas because, you know, it, it says Runaway Houses City Clouds, you know, with those pauses in between. If it was just Runaway Houses City Clouds, fucking great title, but you have all those commas in between. So that's definitely a missed potential for, um, you know, I would say. It's definitely a very ambitious song, but I would say this is not per se the least favorite of mine because without the commas I still love the title and I think it's a very ambitious effort. But I still think that this song is very um, overblown in a way. It's seven minutes long and this is kind of the epic of the album of sorts. But I'm not a huge fan of the song because you know the commas kind of ruin the title for me. Not per se. It's not per se. Uh, you know the, the make or break of uh, of the song but I think it has a lot of like pauses in between you know maybe because of the commas and it has just a lot of like really questionable product production kind of throughout this record I love most of these songs on the album but I do think that the production on Tame Impala gets a bit too much for me sometimes it's a bit too overblown for me sometimes so uh, yeah, you know, I've been praising this album for like 8 minutes, but I am gonna give some criticism. I do think that the production of the album is very overblown and very in your face, very loud in a way. You definitely have to like tone it down a bit if you want to listen to this album or Tame Impala in general. But I do think that this is a very great album. Uh, you know, the 10 track is kind of overblown and kind of overproduced in a way. And I don't really mind is you know, probably the the mindset that the band had whenever they made the song. This, this is probably my only least favorite song on the album because it's just kind of, you know, it's kind of like one of those credit songs or kind of one of those compilation songs where it just kind of combines everything that the record already did. But it's just kind of the worst moments in a way, just kind of some pretty weak in instrumentation, some very, you know, it does take the production of Runaway, House City Clouds, um, you know, it does take that, but it doesn't really take the the acoustic bits from the Sudity or the, the very percussion heavy Solitude is Bliss moments. It just kind of like, it just has this, you know, acoustic, I guess, this very weak acoustic kind of interlude in a way. It does take acoustic bits from the Sudity, but it doesn't, doesn't really execute it that well, that's what I'm meant to say. So I do think that I don't really mind this kind of a weak closure and Runaway House of City Clouds is kind of overblown, I think. Uh, but really my only least favorite track is I, is I Don't Really Mind because it just sounds like the band didn't really mind to make this song. And with Runaway House, they at least tried to make something there, but I think with this last song, they just kind of did it because, oh, why not? You could have ended on Runaway, you know, the epic closing track, it would have been 49 minutes. I think it would have been a bit more consistent for me. But, you know, I don't really mind, you know, it's not a terrible track, but it is my least favorite of the album, so there you go. Uh, there you go, that's um, Inner Speaker from Tame Impala, their debut album. Um, really like this album, I think that the first nine tracks are great, love those tracks. Uh, not a huge fan of the last two, Runaway Houses, you know, not a terrible track. I would say that I don't really mind is like uh, hovering or lingering. Yeah, yeah, hovering above the bad section, I would say. Not a terrible track, but it's definitely the worst track of the album, I would say. Uh, but I still really like this album, so I'm gonna give it a 8.9. Uh, nearly a 9 for me because the ending is kind of weak. It, this kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth and the production is kind of too much for me sometimes. But, but I think besides that, I think this album is really good. You should, should definitely give Tay and Pella uh, a chance. I think I added them to like my favorites list. Uh, like today because I really like this album and you know I, I think they're an interesting band they're kind of like a space rock psychedelic pop rock band you know kind of like MGMT so definitely love that so there you go 
Let me know what you think about Tim and Pella in the comments down below. They, they, you know, for me, I think the only flaw with Tim and Pella is that sometimes their production is a bit too much for me. And they're kind of sexual in a way. As in that last album cover it looks pretty sexual. Uh, and they have like, well, I believe their most popular video. Just watch it and you know what I mean. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that really distracted me from like the rest of their... Like, the rest of the song, so there you go. But um, love this band, I think they're great. I'm gonna listen to Lonerism now in a bit, so um, give them a chance. I really like them. L I like them for the channel. If you just like them, let me know what you think about the song in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.